And um, we've done already one type of basic manipulation to data trees, which is the graph. Right? And what we've done is we've created the diagram. Uh, we've kind of built that diagram that we showed for each one of the basic manipulations. Right? So we, we know what graph is already. It creates a new branch for every data item. So again, if we had the original data tree here, right, where we have two levels before we get to the leaf level, and each one of the branches has uh, a set of um, items on it. If we go to the grafted version, this was previously the branch level that we were at, the current one. If we graft, we make a new branch level, which we'll label C, right? A, B, C. These are our uh, placeholders to label each level within the data tree. All right, so what we had before was just a trunk and five branches going to level B. When we graft, you can see the action is we create a new layer, a new level to the data tree, and now where there were three items here, each one now gets its own location on the data tree. Our, our uh, path is now grown one level, so this gets a unique value of 0, 1, and 2 in addition to 0, 5. And now at the leaf level, every one of the original objects is now located in its own list. So what happens is that we go from a data structure with five branches to one with 18, where every branch terminates with one item. Okay. We should be pretty comfortable with that. And remember, as we go through this sequence, if you have any questions, just um, drop them into the questions window. Okay, so graft is growing a new branch for every item in every list. Okay, so the opposite of a graft is actually called shift. And this is actually a more recent object in Grasshopper that's been added to the collection of elements of objects you can use, um, but it is actually the kind of opposite of graft, although you can use it in more ways than just that. <clears throat> and shift path modifies each path by offsetting its indices. Now what that means is if we had previously on our last slide A, B, C, I, so there were a collection of indices in our path that got us to, to three levels in the data tree, and I represents each index right, of the list, which was always one previously. If we do a shift path saying negative one for uh, where to shift in the branch level, it removes the C level that we just created and brings things back onto a new list. So where we did have three levels, now we have two, and our objects are now stored again on the same list that they were originally. All right, so let's bounce over to Rhino and Grasshopper, and let's drop in a, a new object from the vector grid tab. Choose rectangular or square, either one. All right, now this gives us a grid of points. Notice that they're already organized in columns in the same way that we created them, uh, our grid of points from scratch. So this is a convenient way for us to look at what exactly we're going to be doing when we look at graph, shift, etc. All right, so under params, let's grab a point container, and let's hook up point, the result, P, into the points container. This is a way for us to just turn the preview off of this first object and only preview uh, the points as visible. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to drop in our param viewer and look at how our data is organized. All right, so we have six branches of six. That's from the default values that are located here in the grid. So six paths of six. If we graph that result, we go to sets, tree, graph, connect our points, we'll make a duplicate of our pram viewer we'll see that we have a grafted list now. We've grown our data tree from A, B, C to A, B, C, D. 
And now every item that was on a list now has its own list. So you can see we go 0 to 5, 0 to 5, 0 to 5. All right. And if you double click and you get a representation of the tree um, in this diagram, you can see we've added a level and our tree splits into new branches. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to slide this over just a little bit. Let's go ahead and find the shift object. That's under tree, sets tree shift. And what this does is it takes in the data to modify and the offset that we're going to apply to each branch. So let's drop in the graft into shift. And by default, you'll see it says negative 1. So I'm going to copy and paste my pram viewer again. And I'm going to look at the result of my shift. Notice how the shift gives us a result that is the same as it was before it was grafted. Because the shift takes away the last level of the data structure so that all of our objects fall back onto a list of six. So we're back to six branches of six. Now you can be more specific and say you want to shift negative two or plus one and that will reorganize the index values within each path accordingly. So negative one, that removes the last one. Negative two would remove the last two. So this is a way for us to move along the data path and reorganize the objects that we have stored in that data path uh, accordingly, right? So if we want to go back to the level of the columns, we could do shift negative one. If we want to go back to the level of the, all of the points, we could do shift negative two. So go ahead and uh, drop in a little panel and specify negative two. And let's see what we get. We've now removed two levels of our data structure from the graph, and we're back to one big long list of 36. Okay. I'll put this back to negative one. All right. There's one, or there's two more basic manipulations that we're going to cover, right? The first one, uh, so that was shift, right? That gets us back to um, two levels plus the leaf level. The next one is simplify. And simplify uh, is a really convenient way to remove all those zeros, the zeros that don't seem to have any kind of relationship to anything that's going on in the file. Um, if your data paths have multiple zeros um, or they have a consistent zero across all of them, simplify is a way to remove all of the overlapping branches in that data tree. So let's bounce back over to, uh, to Grasshopper and let's add in the simplify object. So starting from my shift negative one, I'm going to go to sets tree simplify. So I'm going to take the result of that into here. And again, we're just going to look at what, what comes out as a result by copying our pram viewer and connecting it to our simplify. So if we zoom in here, here's the result of our shift. We're going to call this A, B, and C. If we do shift, or we had A, B, C, D, we shifted negative 1. That gets us to A, B, C. And if we simplify A and B, which are have no change across any of the paths, they get removed. So simplify removes all that extra stuff and tries to clean your tree as best it can. Notice how... What it essentially does in this case is to remove the trunk, right? The first two levels that were creating these zeros, those two levels are gone. And now you can think of this maybe, it no, has no trunk, so it's more like a bush. Okay, then a tree. All right, and then there's the one last um, basic manipulation. So simplify here takes all of the overlapping branches and gives us just the stuff that shows difference across the paths. The last one is um, has been around longest uh, next to graft and it's called flatten. And all that does is wipe everything clean. It's a clean slate. And, and you go from anything that was had any kind of hierarchy or organization back down to um, one single list. Right? So 
Um, let's go back to Grasshopper from sets tree, and we'll grab the flatten tree object. All right, so simplify drops into D, and we'll copy and paste, and we're back down to one branch of 36. Right? So that erases all of the hierarchy that you may have built up in your file. So after this webinar, you should be, feel confident that you almost never would have to actually grab, uh, flatten anything. You could use the other types of manipulations to data trees to only remove the amount of information that you want to from each data path, thereby creating uh, very simple ways to relate objects across data structures or across paths in uh, one data structure. Okay, so those are the basics of um, manipulating data trees. Are there any questions about graph, shift, simplify, or flatten? The next step is going to be more advanced. So if you have any questions, let's, let's address them now and take a second to do so. Nope. Okay. You guys are all comfortable with the basics. That's great. <clears throat> so um, the next series of exercises we're going to do are going to be to manipulate data trees in a very specific way, right? So we did have a question. Does it create new lists each time you do one of these? That is based on which of the types you use. So if you were to simplify what was in um, a data structure such as this, the list does not change just the path. If you were to do a shift paths, it changes the list. So what was a list of one becomes a list of three, right? Or back to a list of three in the case of the shift. So it, in that case, it does modify the list. And the graph also modifies the list. What was a list of three now becomes three lists of one. So depending on which of the objects you use, it's going to give you a different result in terms of whether it modifies the list level or leaf level N or the branch level of any of the levels you've created thus far, A, B, or C. And that's a really good question. But in all cases, the objects that we've just been reviewing, they allow us to move along a data path, right? So you can grow it, you can shrink it by doing the shift, you can simplify it by uh, removing the duplicate overlaps, or you can flatten it by just putting it all back down to the original, uh, <clears throat> the original level. Okay, so 